Unimatic has been a brand that I have followed for a long time, but unfortunately, a lot of their watches that I do like, they don't have the date on them, and you know I love a cheeky date complication on a watch. Last week, they bought out some mil-spec watches, all quartz, new tool watch range, and instead of being a limited edition run, this is going to be in their permanent collection. Can they take on other brands that make these type of watches like Victorinox or G-Shock? Is there still a wedge in the tool watch? space very interested to know what you think before we kick off this isn't a sponsored or paid promotion I bought this with my own money but am i glad that i did i'll tell you at the end brand new out just release this is the unimatic ut gmt this is part of their modello uno range but a new range for them which focuses on purely tool watches they've all their watches have always had this tool watch aesthetic to them and i've always been a big fan of unimatic they have been creeping up in price over recent years they started out using seiko mechanical movements now they've moved up to salita and a few other movements i think but these tool watches watches are all quartz watches. This is the GMT version. They also have three hand watches as well. The three hand watches use a Seiko movement. This uses a Ronda 515-24D. This one has the countdown bezel on it. There's also bezel-less versions as well. Before we dive into the watch itself, because there is a lot to like about this, I love the design, but there's definitely some cons as well that we need to go through. And I think one of the biggest cons, this is a GMT watch. I travel a lot for work and I have a lot of GMT watches in my collection. And I think this is probably the least useful GMT that I own, so we'll go into that. Before we kick off, let's go over those case measurements. This is a 48.4 from lug to lug, 40.9 at the bezel, and then a 43.8 including the crown, 13.7 millimeters thick, and a 22 millimeter lug width. This comes on a very nice, quite thick nylon strap that I didn't think I was gonna like. I didn't think I was gonna like it, but after wearing this for a week, it really conformed to my wrist. I love this larger keeper. We have a signed buckle and tang, nice thick nylon. It does pick up a little bit of dirt as you go through, so you do have to give it a wash occasionally, but so far quite impressed with this included strap. I wish it was quick release. It doesn't have any quick release on there. Also, I believe some of the other Unimatic watches have drilled lugs. This one doesn't. This must be a new case because Unimatic do make a bracelet for some of their watches. That bracelet, unfortunately, at the moment doesn't fit fit this watch but I certainly will be the first to buy that bracelet as soon as they get end links that fits this watch. The watch comes with the a two year warranty card. They are individually numbered. We also include this pouch, this carry pouch. I mean they make a bit of a song and dance about this on the website but honestly it's just the same as you'd get with any service pouch has foam inside and then is that sort of harder plastic you can definitely it's not solid plastic it's not a hard plastic box it's nothing special but it certainly is a nice touch you also get a sticker with it as well the thing i love most about these unimatic watches and have always liked is this rugged industrial minimalist look that they have this one has a screw down crown oversized screw down crown which i think really adds to the look this has a count down bezel the bezel action on this is extremely precise rock solid lines up perfectly we have a loomed pip at the top definitely has a defined click to it but it is absolutely rock solid bezel nice coin edge well as a coin edge on the crown as well unsigned crown the back is really spectacular there's a lot of engraving work on there these are individually numbered unimatic on the back i believe they call this their x-ray back i wish it had some black infill maybe ink that they use for when they're engraving watches or maybe a bit of paint just to bring bring that pattern out. The other thing with the case as well, the lugs don't slope towards your wrist. So it does sit quite high, which is something that I thought I wasn't going to like when I first tried it on. But after wearing it, it's no problem once you get used to it. But it does sit very high on the wrist. It's a 13.7 millimeter thickness, which is quite thick, I suppose, for a quartz watch. It does have 300 meter water resistance. So because the lugs don't slope down, it does fit high on the wrist. Here you can see it on my 7.2 inch wrist. But once I got used to it, and also we have a slightly convex case back, it does wear quite nicely. One of the 
unique selling points of this particular model is their 360 protection. There is an inner core that protects the Ronda movement in this watch, and there's also an enhanced gasket. They show quite a good graphic on their website. There is also a quite a thick sapphire crystal, 2.5 millimeters thick. Cushion around the movement protects it from drops, and they have done a lot of drop tests on this. In fact, you can even download the report on their website. They have the full specification of the watch and also the test results from the drop tests. They've been measuring this to a mil spec standard, which is MILSTD810H, which I believe is to do with the ruggedness of items rather than it being a specific one for watches like COSC, for example, or the ISO standard that covers timekeeping. I believe this is just to do with the durability of the case. And you can tell how durable the case is. It's got quite a nice weight to it, stainless steel case. Let's zoom into the dial because there's quite a lot going on here. They talk a lot on the website about this font that they've created for the numbers on the dial. This font is, they've tried to mirror military style fonts and make it quite legible in most lighting conditions. So it's good that the numbers are legible in medium lighting conditions because fortunately the loom is not what I would expect from a watch that is billing itself as a tool watch. I've done an experiment here where I I charge the loom under a UV light and this is its degradation over the next 10 minutes sped up here of course just to save time probably about a 3 out of 10 in comparison to Seiko or what Citizen offer it only really shows through in normal use on the hands so I think they could have done a better job of applying the loom on the numbers themselves or perhaps put either batons on there or maybe loom pips as well around the numbers instead of making the numbers themselves selves loomed. The loom pip on the bezel is loomed so we can see that on here but unfortunately the numbers don't really show that vibrantly. The other thing I bought this watch 100% because it had the date on it. I'm a huge fan of the date complication. If I move the hands out of the way here the, the font that they've used for the date window. The date window is circular at the six o'clock. The date is not, the font that they've used is not that vibrant. And even you can see under the studio lights, it's not that easy to see the 15 there. The white is not that vibrant on the date window. It, it does get lost a little bit. They needed to apply a bit more paint to this, thicker application on the font that they've used for the date. It is quite difficult to see in some lighting conditions, which is a shame because if you contrast it with the GMT at the top here at 12, the font that they've used for that and the white paint is very legible. That you can see quite well. And there's the orange arrowhead pointing at the GMT. The GMT appears as a digital display. The hands are black, but have the application of loom. They're quite large very legible in most lighting conditions. They've got that beautiful industrial look which really matches the rest of the watch. There's Unimatic at the bottom and then they've put mil spec and then made in Italy because Unimatic is an Italian company. Obviously Ronda is uh, partly made in Switzerland. So not all the components are made in Italy. I guess made in Italy versus made in US has some ambiguity to it like the made in Switzerland. If you look at the breakdown, the deconstructed image on the Unimatic site, it shows quite a vibrant gasket, an orange gasket to match the orange of the cushion on the movement and I thought you might be able to see that on the dial on the rehaul. If you tilt it you can see it a little bit but it is not obvious at all. Okay let's now talk about the GMT part of this watch. There's really two issues with this if you're a frequent traveler like me. So I've pulled the watch out to the time setting position here. We're at two o'clock on the GMT and then we're coming up to 25 past eight on the main dial. Now if I start to move this minute hand round you'll notice that the GMT wheel also moves. First issue with that if you're a frequent traveler like me is that it's hard to get this perfectly lined up because as the as the minute hand goes round this does move. So if I wanted to set the time at quarter if I wanted to set the time at say half past 11 and then set the GMT differently I've got to somehow manipulate the GMT let's just do that so if I pull this out watch is going but if I pull out the GMT you'll notice that that 
if I move the GMT wheel, how do I get this? I have to guess that it's halfway in between the 10 and then the 11 there. So you almost have to set the GMT hand when you're on the full hour, which is also difficult because if I wanted to get the GMT dial perfectly lined up, I would have to set it at the full hour. Here we are at midnight, but unfortunately now this dial is obscured. So I can't really get quite fine with this to make sure it's exactly on the other time zone. The other issue with this as well is that I travel in between time zones in the US. I might need to put the hour back or forward several hours depending on what where I'm traveling. I'm in the eastern time zone, say it's quarter to three. If I wanted to go back a couple of hours because I'm shifting to a different time zone and move, move back two hours. Did you see what the issue was? The GMT also moves, which you don't want it to do. You want this, the second time zone, to stay on the second time zone because that time zone isn't changing. You're moving back and forward a couple of hours in the time zone, but the other time zone isn't moving. Let's try and illustrate what I mean about the GMT function on this watch not being useful if you're a traveler. Here is a traveler's GMT watch. This is the Jack Mason Strato Timer watch. My home time zone we're looking now at about six minutes past 11. The second time zone that I'm monitoring is six minutes past five. Say I'm going back two hours so I'm traveling back probably somewhere in Texas two hours. Let me just flip this back or maybe I'm going to Denver. So I'm going back one hour and then I'm going back two hours. So we're now in my new, I've got off the plane, I'm now in my new time zone, which is two hours behind my current one, and we're now at six minutes past nine. But the London time zone is still the same. The, the London time zone, or whatever, the second time zone that I'm monitoring is still at five o'clock. That time zone doesn't change just because I went back. I went back two hours. It is still five o'clock in London. It was still five o'clock in London, even in when I was in my home time zone of 11 o'clock. So if you're a traveler, what you really need is just to move your home time zone and then keep your second time zone that you're monitoring at the same time. Essentially, you don't need to move it. As I move back the minute hand here, you'll see that that second time zone also moves, which is not what you want in a GMT if you are traveling. This would be more of a desk GMT. Unfortunately means that this is probably the least useful GMT watch in my entire collection. The pros for me are definitely the design. I love the design. I will be keeping this watch. I paid full price for this. This isn't a paid review. They didn't send me this in. I bought it as soon as I saw it on the website because for me, this is a great value proposition. It's a very hard wearing watch. Great look, great minimal, but also industrial looking watch. I was a big fan of the brand anyway. This is coming in at just shy of six hundred dollars i paid about 569 all the prices on their website are in euros but it does do the conversion when you go through to pay for it i'll definitely be swapping this strap out to another one i bought a tropic a genuine tropic tropic strap here you can see it i swapped it out onto this watch it's just a shame that they're not neither of these straps are quick release but overall a lot of cons but also a lot of pros so i will be keeping this watch but most importantly as with all of these reviews really interesting to know what you think. Do you have all the Unimatic watches? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time on Casual Watch Reviews.